Hi, this is Dr. Patrick Cohn for the Sports Psychology Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. His name is Dr. Bob Winters. Bob is a good friend of mine, and we were colleagues uh, over the last 34 years. We met at the University of Virginia, where we studied with Linda Bunker and Dr. Bob Rotella there. And um, since then, we've both been at it, helping athletes succeed. And um, Bob currently, he's the resident sports psychologist at the Ledbetter Golf Academy, and he also does international speaking and working with high-level golfers and other athletes as well. And it's a real pleasure to have you on, Dr. Bob. Dr. Patrick Cohen, you know, pal, the dynamic duo is back on the air again. So it's great to be with you. And for all the people who are just tuning in who really don't know me or know about us, we've been together for about 33, 34 years. We've done a lot of different projects together, books together, audio seminar sessions. And each of us has, I think, a very unique and wonderful approach, you know, to delivering this great message of sports enhancement to all our athletes and people who really just want to get better. So it's great to be here on your program. Thanks. Now, you and I started really in different paths. Um, so I came from working with Ken Revisa at Cal State Fullerton, which was a very technique type approach, peak experience at the time, relaxation and doing techniques with, with athletes. I think your background, correct me if I'm wrong, was a little bit more on the sports vision side um, right. and, and that. So could you talk to where was your background when we met at UVA? Well, you know, for about 10 years before I got to UVA, I was doing a lot of things freelance. They really didn't have any, you know, PhD sports psychology programs when I first really got into all this stuff. So I was doing a lot of hypnotherapy uh, work. I got associated with the Dr. Herbert Price and the American Optometric Association Sports Vision section and started doing a lot of performance psychology with uh, state police officers, CIA, FBI people, and shoot and don't shoot, uh, flash recognition training, vision training. Then we got involved with Olympic athletes and uh, AAU athletes. And then that led me to Virginia, where I'm sitting here going, I have my master's in, in psychology and physical education. And I met you, know, you and Tom Hansen and a lot of other people. And I asked, you know, Dr. Bob Rattel, I said, boy, I'd really love to come here. And he knew of my work, you know, in the field of sports vision and putting and confidence. And he said, well, why don't you come here and do your PhD here in you know, Charlottesville? And actually, you know, doing a couple of summers of the UVA conferences and meeting you and all the other great people there. I said, this is the place where I want to be. I've been doing it since, you know, the late 70s. So I've been involved in this field of uh, human sports performance enhancement for a long time. And so now I got to uh, Virginia and uh, learned a lot, you know, from all the great people there and learned a lot from you. And uh, we did a lot of things and traveled a lot. And so that's really where it is. But I also came, you know, from a professional athlete, you know, standpoint, I was a professional golfer, still play, you know, a lot of different uh, events, getting ready to do uh, United States Senior Open qualifying this year. So my game is still at a very, very high level. And I think the sports psychology has really helped me improve as a performer and also as, you know, a, a psychologist. So, and here we are today after 33, 34 years of knowing each other and sort of going our separate paths and every now and then coming into sort of this parallel universe and coming together and, and talking about the great benefits of how you know, your mind can help improve your performance. Yeah, well, it's really interesting. You mentioned Tom Hansen, and he he went, he, we all did the, you could say the traditional sports psych. Sure. If you could say Rotella was traditional, probably not, but we all yeah. did the traditional sports psych and motor learning with Linda Bunker there. Sure. Um, and today we all have different approaches. Tom used ZFT a lot right. and, and some traditional sports psych. I feel like I use more traditional cognitive behavioral type techniques. Um, and I'm, I'm a composite of, you know, Revisa, Rotella, Ron Smith, Wayne Hollowell, you know, a lot of guys out there that have been doing it. How sure. would you characterize your approach given your unique background today? 
Oh, I, I think I'm a real hybrid in the field. I come from a professional athlete, coach, sports psychologist, sports vision consultant. Uh, I'm an eclectic. And so if I can't get you from a sports psychology perspective, I'll go a motor learning perspective or a sports vision perspective, or even sort of a hypnosis type perspective. I'm, I'm going to actually go into whatever avenue I can actually relate to you, you know, as, you know, an athlete, as a performer. And I think that's the great thing about being an athlete and also doing what you know we do is that you not only have this intellectual understanding but you have this experiential understanding this empathy for athletes so when athletes you know talk with me and like you because you've had you know a tremendous athletic background they understand they're just not talking to a psychoanalyst or somebody who just dabbles in the world of sports psychology we are sports psychologists. We are sport performers. We are mental coaches who just happen, you know, to get into this field because we were athletes who wanted to get better. My whole philosophy has been this. If you're going to talk the talk, you sure as hell better be able to walk the walk. And so when you can role model it, I think that really speaks a lot and gives you a lot of credibility. So if someone comes to you, and they're struggling. Most of the time we see athletes that are slumping or struggling, of course. They don't often come to us at the peak of their career or the peak of their performance. But if they come to you, they're, they lost confidence, they're struggling mentally, maybe they're in a slump, then how do you get them from point A to point B? If, if you can kind of give me the cliff notes of what's the approach? Well, you know, I work on the human being model. I mean, no one size fits all for me. I mean, everybody comes in, I look at them, I go, what's going on? You know, tell me what's happening. And you are absolutely right. You know, when you're playing with a lot of trust and confidence, all right, on one side of the scale, you know, I've got everything going. Everybody's kissing my buns. I'm making all the shots. You know, everything's easy. But when you start to have a little bit of doubt, when you start to have a little bit of failure, whoop, you know, the scales tip. One is pillow feathers and the other is bricks. All right. So my whole, you know, feeling about athletes is to help them get out of their way to actually not create confidence per se. I want them to actually remove the doubt, remove the fear and just get to what, you know, I call a modicum of success. Because when you start building success and build success upon success, the reservoir of all of that success that you build up from doing the right things, doing your process is really what we call enduring confidence. So when people say I'm, I'm lacking confidence and because I am the confidence doctor, uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people go, well, just, can you help me become more confident? I've never told someone, Hey, I need you to go out and become more confident. I need you to be more positive. And they go, why? Why wouldn't you tell me that? And I said, well, reminds me of an old story about, you know, a young man coming home. He was about, you know, sixth grader and he was a terrible speller. And his dad said, Tommy, he goes, you just need to be more positive. You need to be more confident going in there. And that spelling examination, he said, okay, dad, I'll, I'll try. So he comes back the next night and he brings back, you know, this paper and it's got, you know, out of 10 words, he's missed seven. And his dad looks at him, he goes, gee, what? Tommy, I thought, you know, we had this big talk last night. I told you to be positive going into that spelling test today. And he looked at his dad. He said, dad, I was 100% positive I was going to flunk that sucker. All right. So for me, it isn't about, you know, telling and using lip service. It's that I need you to do some very specific and purposeful things that will help bring you success. We can talk about, you know, trust and confidence until the cows come home. All right. Like the farmer in the field. But until you give them specific intervention strategies or things, you know, mental keys to put in their toolbox, you're just, you know, really, you know, huffing and puffing a lot. So that's really my whole feeling about it. we're going to give them specific things. This is what I need you to do. And will you be compliant? Will you get to yes on this? That's the first thing, you know, I'm really trying to ask my athletes. You know, I ask them, you know, do you believe in your talent? And if they say no, Ooh, you know, then, you know, we, we've got some work to do. Yeah. And I love that approach, Bob, where I call it removing the confidence killers. Mm. You mentioned doubt and you mentioned fear. And I have 10 confidence killers that I go over with the athletes that you have to remove. 
But I also talk about this idea of proactive confidence. In mm. other words, they have to take the bull by the horns. I love the notion that you can't give, a parent can't give an athlete confidence. A coach can't give an athlete confidence. We can't give an athlete confidence. It has to come from within their self, right? Oh, absolutely. This, yeah, absolutely. Emphasis yeah. on the self-confidence. So despite years and years of practice and play, an athlete comes to you and says, I have no confidence. How can that be? Yeah, I mean, so they're always saying it's sort of like the chicken or the egg, all right? You know, which comes first? I mean, do I have success or do I have confidence? And I always tell people this. I go, I'm no expert on this, all right? You know, on chicken or the egg. But the point of it is, is that, first of all, let's take a look. I mean, you, you've been successful or you actually have been proficient at this skill. So you have to develop this whole notion of competence and you need to reclaim this feeling of competence. So for me, it's this sense of, I have mastery. And it isn't that people lose their confidence, Pac. What I happen to believe is that a lot of people, they sort of give their power away. They almost talk themselves into, um, I, I don't have it. And they start talking and reflecting on the good times about how things used to be. And I'm always you know, sort of self-correcting them. I said, hold on. You're bigger, smarter, faster, stronger than you've ever been two, three years ago. And they go, yeah, but, you know, I just, I just don't feel the same. And that's the problem, you know, with confidence, because confidence, be it a whole amalgamation of wonderful experiences, confidence is a feeling, all right? Pretty much it's a feeling. And I'm always trying to get, you know, people a, a little bit away from the feeling, and I need you to focus on your process. I need you to focus on execution because if you can focus on execution and you get the job done through doing what you know you can do, you don't need momentum. You don't need to have positivity. You don't need to have confidence. That stuff comes knocking at your door when you actually focus on doing what you know you can do and you're successful in you know, creating that process for yourself. And that's sort of you know, how I feel about it. Yeah, great stuff. Um, but you know, one of my philosophies, Bob, today is as athletes climb up the ladder and they become more successful, the expectations elevate, right? And when the expectations sure. elevate, now they're in a situation where I'm, I'm expected to do that. You know, I, oh, I'm sure. expected to shoot 69 or I'm expected to score 20 points in the game. So there is no there is no confidence or fulfillment from that anymore because the expectations have risen has risen with success and then therefore and I call it the confidence expectation connection those expectations really start to sabotage an athlete's belief uh, of that confidence and that's one of my philosophies with success comes higher expectations which limits confidence. Well, you know, the whole point about, you know, confidence, let's, let's really just get right down to the core of it. Why is it that people want to feel confident, Pack? You know, it's twofold. And it's like the fighter. The left jab says, I have the confidence and I believe, all right, I believe in my ability. I have that. Okay, good. You know, that's great. It's great that you have that. But this is the second reason. And it's the right cross. It's the, it's the knockout punch. It's the feeling of, I'm bulletproof. I can do whatever I want. I have no fear. I have no doubt. And that's why I've always found that people love the feeling of confidence. Why? Because I'm bulletproof. I can do whatever it is I want because there is no doubt at all. There's an absence of mistrust. There's nothing. All that's there is just pure, developed, and innate talent and now you can actually access that potential. And that's why people love that feeling of being confident. And you're absolutely right. Expectations get in the way. And so the only thing I'm really wanting my athletes to expect is, you know, you should expect that you're going to be there 100% with effort and focus. You, you expect that you're going to do the very best you can do. And you should expect at the end of the day, you can live with whatever happens because you knew that you had purposeful intent to do the very best that you could. And at the end of the day, that's really what you have you know, to live with because as we go up 
And it's in every business situation, every performance situation, is that we have this you know, ladder of success. And the more that you actually attain this level of attainment, and the more that you aspire, oh, we can do more. It's like you're a great salesman. Hmm? We're going to set your quota up here. And you're sitting there going, I worked my butt off to get that quota. Wow. And it's almost as if we have this level of expectation, this level of aspiration that's almost unattainable. So what happens is that we have this imagined, this is what I want to achieve. And here's the expectation. And when your results don't equal or match that expectation, you've got a gap. You, you know, there's frustration, there's disappointment, there's disillusion, there's disgust, there's maybe even anger. So the point of it is we have to eliminate those outcome or result expectations and say, really, what should I expect of myself? I always tell people, and I will tell you this, and you know how I am. It's sort of like good, better, best. I mean, it's sort of like going in and getting a mattress, all right? You know, this is a good mattress. It's a Sealy Posturepedic. It's a great mattress. But I want something a little bit better. Well, here's a Serta Perfect Sleeper. I don't sell mattresses, by the way. Here's a Serta Perfect Sleeper, all right? It's a little bit more. It's, it's a better mattress. Well, I want your best. And so here is the sleep number system. It's the best I've got in the store. And so I'm always looking at athletes like that, you know, are you good when you start out? Fantastic. I believe in my talent. At the end of a, you know, a round, end of a performance, we could always critique and do 2020 hindsight, armchair quarterback and say, I could improve this. I could be better at this. But the real issue, the real core of great performance is on this one moment right now, are you giving your best all day long? And that's like in what I've been giving you, okay? This is the best of Dr. Bob Winters, the confidence doctor that I can give you right now. You don't like it? Have me on next week. I'll do better next week. But this is the best I can do right now. And that's really an almost any athlete, any performer can say. At the end of the day, that's the best. And I think most performers, and you and I have talked about this, most performers feel bad, not that they actually you know, misperformed, misexecuted or whatever. They feel kind of bad and angry at themselves when they know deep down that they tanked, that they sort of let off, you know, the gas pedal, they just sort of gave up and they didn't give their best effort. And that's when we start, you know, getting in some serious uh, depression issues and they feel bad and they start beating up on themselves. And that's really where, you know, our work really comes in to help them. Yeah. Well, and it's unfortunate. I, I feel like, we have something for all athletes that we can contribute to, whether it's making athletes or helping athletes be more consistent or reaching their peak more often. But the reality is in, in the business that we're in, people seek us out because they're slumping, they lost confidence, they have challenges, they're not performing well in competition. That's just the nature of the business. But I hope that perception, and I'm trying to change that perception that I feel like what we offer can be for all athletes and not just slumping athletes. Yeah. I mean, no one, you know, calls me up in the middle of the night and go, wow, you know, I was down at the bottom of the pack coming in this golf tournament and uh, boy, I felt unbelievably relaxed and comfortable. It was fantastic. Nobody was watching me. Uh, can you help me become the most average player on tour? No, nobody comes. I don't get that call. All right. I can't help you become, well, if you want to be really mediocre, you want to be average. Just follow the followers, do what everybody else is doing. But that's really what it means to be outstanding. You stand out, you separate yourself by making yourself unequal from everyone else. And that's really what our work does. That's what you do so well in your world. That's what I do so well in our world. And when we come together, I mean, you know, we've got some really powerful stuff to offer people because the point of it is, you know, I, I've never really seen anybody come to me and call me up and go, wow, I am just making too many putts out there. I mean, I just need to slow down. I'm on fire. You don't really get that, right? So the point of it is, is that, yes, we see people who are sort of down, you know, maybe in the valley and we, anything we can do, hopefully we'll get them, you know, to really peak. But here is, you know, the, the proof in the pudding is that when an athlete gets up here to the top and they're performing well, 
do they really recognize what they're doing? Do they understand this is really what's happened? And I got to tell you, you know, we've been in this for a long time. There's a lot of athletes who, you know, you have helped, I've helped. And then they sort of drop off the map and they go, hmm, I wonder how I got there. And, and they, sometimes they don't put, you know, A and B equals C together. And, and they start, you know, going off, you know, in different directions. So it's all about, you know, creating a recipe for success for each you know, individual person. What might work you know, for Judy may not work for Joan. What might work for Ted may not work for Bill. So we have to work at each, you know, look at each person as a human being and say, this is what works for you. This doesn't work for you. And it's sort of like creating a master salad, if you will. You're taking a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And we're sort of psychological detectives, if you will. We're trying to uncover these blind spots that all of our athletes have so that they can say, ah, aha, because what you and I do, we help them turn on the light above their head that goes, aha, okay, now that makes sense. Now you're talking to me. Love it. Love the analogies. I've been talking with Dr. Bob Winters, also the confidence doctor. We can call him <laughs> as well. Is it theconfidencedoctor.com or? It's theconfidencedoctor.com. No gaps in between the confidence doctor, theconfidencedoctor.com, or you can go to drbobwinters.com, drbobwinters.com. Or you can go to peakperformancesports.com and find me via my great friend, Dr. Patrick Cohn. <laughs> peaksports.com we'll have to correct you on that okay peak sports okay yeah. peak sports. It's, you know, we've taken off the performance okay yeah, take out the bob it's been a pleasure reconnecting with you thanks for joining me on the sports psychology podcast uh, thanks so much patrick you know and continued great success <laughs>